this is my grill, or at least it used to be. It's gotten old. Things rotted out of it. There's no spare parts for it. So I'm going to convert it. To do this, I need to make this area the tallest area. So I need to flatten everything above that. So I'm going to do that. First thing to do, remove this. Look at there, it's already removed. The next thing to do is remove this, but I believe I might hold on to the handle and I might use the handle later, we'll see. So I take this off. I've already unbolted it. I gotta take these off as well. So we'll do that. To remove that, what I had to do is because I couldn't get to the nuts and uh, the Phillips head were screwed, was I took a drill and drilled the head of the screw out. So the way you do that is you put your drill bit right there in the middle of your screw and you drill it out and you need to use a drill bit that is as big or bigger than the shaft of your screw. So what I've done is, in addition to remove everything off the top, I've taken the valves out. There it is, ready to be uh, formed and topped. The grill's prepped. Got some lumber here. There's my granite. All right, so I bought the wood. All right, I bought the wood. What I've done is I've take my measurements from end to end, front to back, I've cut me some wood. I'm gonna frame in the top of it as you see it here. I've cut some one by eights, so those will come up even. And that's what the granite will sit on. So it's gonna be boxed all the way around like this. I'm gonna stain this espresso and then put a water-based polyurethane it, expands and contracts with the sun a little better and then i got my biscuit joints marked got everything in place had it clamped down i'm cutting my biscuit joints now here's my biscuit joiner you can see there's the slot there so i'll get all these cuts done and then i will assemble the back with biscuits in place without glue I have it reassembled, I have biscuits in all my joints. I kind of cut it loose there in the middle. The middle ones are a little loose so I can play with them so they're not bowing me out in the middle. The end ones are tight. What I am going to do is, other than the biscuit joints here, if I can get out of the backlight issue here here I've drilled a hole so this hole I will screw a decking screw in in there to fasten these two pieces once I get the screw in there I'll drill a pilot hole put that in there and glue that in there and then everywhere I drill a hole be a peg so what I do is I'll fasten it with three screws here and then I'll fasten the front piece Three screws here with caps. What I'm using is a decking screw with a Torx head. That's why you drill a pilot hole so you don't split this and then don't go too tight so the head starts splitting it. You just want to get it snug. This is white pine, so it's pretty forgiving, but it's not indestructible, so be careful don't split. All right. Drug my holes, my caps fit. Oh, see, there you go. All right, here I'm gonna kind of tell you what I did. I used this drill bit to make my holes. 
This is a 31 64th, 1 64th from being a half inch. I drilled my first one with a half inch, but because of a little bit of drill bit wobble, you know, the cap didn't really fit all that well, so I went down one size. And there's your button right there. Cap button, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, then I drilled my pilot hole, and this is a 3 seconds drill bit. Drilled my pilot hole. And then I used a quarter inch drill bit in there to make room for the head, for the flare of the head. Because I got to put that screw in there, and after that screw in there, that cap still has to fit. So three drill bits to do that right there, and I'm trying to make sure they fit. Now to sand. Have to sand because this is at an angle, this needs to be sanded flat. And I'm gonna sand this pretty right here. All right, I got it together. It's not glued or anything, but I've got it together and I've sanded. Remember, if you sand, go with the green. Got the front sanded down, level. Checked it with a speed square. Make sure it was flat all the way across. Tack cloth. After you sand, get rid of your dust with the tack pole. Oh. I didn't run my screws in all the way because I need to take it apart and stain everything. But there it is in a finished wood form. No stain, just natural white pine. Not too bad. Here's what I'm using, an espresso color, it's dark brown, old masters, it's a wiping stain, so we're going to use lint-free lint rags or cloth, however you want to look at it. That's what I'm using for stain, you got to shake this before you use it. And then I'm using a water-based poly, it's an exterior, it's a superior UV protectant. This is a little more flexible, it doesn't... It doesn't uh, crack as much in the sunlight. So we're going to be using that. Do not shake this before use. You get water bubbles or air bubbles. You don't want air bubbles in there. So let it sit before you use it. And uh, don't jostle it around too much while you're using it. I'm using a two and a half inch bristle brush. Got it disassembled. Use tack cloth, clean it off one more time, and then uh, we're going to stain it. It's always to do a test run of your stain on a scrap or a piece of wood that's not going to be sh uh, showing. And there's what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Got the grill cleaned out. Looking halfway decent. Got my pieces stained. Two coats of urethane. Ready to assemble. All right, we're gluing our joints, putting our biscuits in with glue, and getting everything assembled. Got my lovely assistant out here helping me out. Mm-hmm. Put a little glue, putting the biscuits in. And uh, all right, and then putting it in the slots. All right, so got everything screwed together. All the biscuit joints in and glued. Got everything clamped and pulled tight. Use some parchment paper under my clamps so I don't stain my newly stained edges. I like it. Now I need to glue in the caps. I think we'll do that now. All right, just putting a little glue around the inserted, the insert here, whatever you want to call it, the part that goes in the hole. Went a little crazy with that one. Put a little glue around it. Take it here, put it in the hole. Try to put it in the hole evenly. 
There you go. Just take a hammer, give it a little tap. Get it to seat. Take a rag. Clean off the excess. Take a rag, clean off the excess. Just Use a rag, try to get off as much of the excess as possible. There you go. Two out of three. All right, so there's the front with all my buttons. There's the side. Try not to get too much backlight. All right, so we got it clamped. We're ready to put the granite on. Ready to put the granite on it. I like it. The glue is set. I've put two coats of urethane on it, waiting for it to dry. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. This is what I'll be using to adhere the granite to the top. I'm using an acrylic silicone because non-acrylic sil silicones, if you read a little bit about granite, tend to stain granite. So I'm going to avoid, try to avoid staining or a stain leaching into the granite and making it all the way to the top using an acrylic based silicone. So there you go. All right, here it is, finished product. Put a little bit of silicone underneath it. Had a couple friends help me out. Put it up there, Ethan and Greg did. Pretty good. Here's the hose for the grill, the original grill. So not too bad, not too bad at all. So here's the whole reason this was done. So that we'd have a place to put this. A fry top. Digging it, digging it, digging it. All right. So there you go, repurpose an old grill. Get a new outside table to use that's mobile. Just a little work, a little imagination. So there you go, that's the way I did it.